Hi there everyone, welcome back to another video here with me Jenny Kirk and in association with our sponsor Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. And also don't forget that you can support us over on Patreon too and uh, that helps us to keep making the videos that you really want to see. But this video today has come about actually because we've just upgraded the camera that we use to do on-train video here on this layout and we've used it to great effect on previous layouts as well. We get a lot of questions about these so today we're going to see which is better for filming your layout from a driver's eye view. Is it this or is it this? Come with me. I'm looking forward to showing you the merits of both of these cameras. The camera that we've been using actually for quite a few years is a Panasonic HX A1M and it looks a bit like a it's kind of a I've seen it referred to as a bullet cam and it's quite big by modern standards but back in the day this was tiny. Now it takes micro SD cards so if I just unscrew the back and you can see in there We've got the micro USB B, I think that is, which allows us to charge it, and then a micro SD card just fits in. Now, on top of the camera, and this is all watertight, or at least water resistant as well, which means that it's also really great for going outdoors with. But on the top, we've got a microphone at the front there which um, does tend to catch a lot of the wind noise unless you fit it with a Trump wig. And uh, we've got one of those here. So uh, we just put that over the top and that cuts out all of that kind of wind whistling noise if you're wanting to film outdoors. And the lens still pokes through the end. It's really good back in its day. It does connect with a smartphone and uh, it connects using a short range Wi-Fi signal. And that allows you to actually watch on your smartphone what the camera is actually seeing. And that can be quite useful for setting up shots because as you see, there's no viewfinder on the camera itself. When you come to turn it on, I press the power button a couple of seconds and there, and we get a series of lights. And what you'll find is these give you an indication of the battery level. So given that they all came on, that shows it's fully charged. And then once it's gone through its boot up cycle, we've got uh, little red lights on just to tell you what's going on. And uh, essentially easiest way to actually uh, start recording, this button at the front, hold down it beeps and then that we know it is recording so this is uh, the camera watching you watching me doing the camera and we've got a cupboard monkey behind there press it again stop recording and press and hold down to turn it off and the light will go out so it's pretty easy and straightforward to use but it it's a circular shape, so it doesn't really sit very well on a flat surface. If you put that into a wagon, it's going to roll from side to side. And this is where the downside of this camera comes. We had to create its own little cradle to fit in. And this is made out of some scrap plastic. So whenever you see the old shots of the camera going around the layout, we had to push that into the cradle and that just stops it from being able to roll around but because this whole setup is quite large if i get a regular small wagon there it's just too big um, and it sits too high over the top so you have to use something like a bogey flat wagon such as uh, this warwell from hatton's and that then gives you the uh, ability to film on the train. And then you have to be quite careful to set this up so that it doesn't actually film your wagon. And you've got to chock it. You've got to make sure that the camera itself 
isn't rolled round to one side which will then put the entire picture onto its side so it can be a little bit fiddly and that's where our next camera comes in we were really really fortunate to be sent this through by one of the sponsors of the channel and uh, we've been playing around with it and this is i've just got the box here an sq13 mini dv and uh, it's on there's waterproof it uh, marks itself as being full hd 1920 by 1080 with a super wide angle lens for 155 degrees that does mean you're going to get a little bit of fish eyeing but actually the other camera the panasonic also has that wide angle lens so, that, so that's something that you're going to get with all of these really small cameras the plus points on this as you can see that is a good deal smaller its cuboid shape also means that it will rest on a flat surface and not rock and that's really really handy the other thing is if we go back to that smaller wagon this is a perfect fit in there the lens itself you can just see at the end uh, actually looks over the edge of this wagon so when we show you some of the footage the actual uh, edge of the wagon is almost non-existent in the picture one of the other things that you can do with this camera which you couldn't with the Panasonic is that you can put it onto the veranda end of a brake van and that too can be pretty good for getting a guard's eye view tour of your layout in the bigger scales such as O gauge it's also possible to fit these into the cabs so there's an awful lot of possibilities for these again it takes a micro SD card although the instructions bill it as being a TF card now TF stands for trans flash uh, and actually they're pretty much the same thing so a micro SD card will go in and will work so don't let the mentioning of TF card throw you it did throw us at first we were wondering what on earth it was and then that came to light getting this set up to record you have to do through the app as far as we can tell when we've been playing about with it you have to connect this to your mobile smartphone the problem we found with that is that the um, short range Wi-Fi signal that it is using to connect really is short range and it can be very easily screened out by wooden objects and even yourself if the camera passes one side of you and your mobile phone is being held at the other side of you then you may suddenly find that the signal drops and the camera itself doesn't appear to be able to keep recording when it loses that signal that said the actual picture quality is really really sharp I found that the picture quality that came from this was a much higher quality than from the Panasonic although you might expect that because there are a number of years that separate these two cameras when it comes to uh, the light reactivity this camera gave a much nicer picture under low light conditions the Panasonic can go a bit grainy when the light starts to reduce and it doesn't react as quickly when it passes from light to dark and back again we did find though that there were certain aspects of this camera that were a little bit harder to use when it came to everyday usage so it's not quite as easy to use as the Panasonic camera however I guess you would very quickly get used to its quirks and actually they're not a deal breaker in my view one of the other things that I really like about this camera is if we go back to that small wagon you can do something that we could never do with the Panasonic and that is actually put it in the wagon sideways and this has given a whole new view of the entire layout and it's very reminiscent of being on a train journey looking out of the windows in the coaches and I quite like being able to see the layout from that kind of an aspect 
All told, can I recommend both of these cameras? Yes, I can. Now, the Panasonic, this particular version, you won't find, but there is an updated one. It is still out there, and Panasonic is definitely a well-known brand name that you can trust. But these cameras are relatively inexpensive. You can find them in all manner of retailers online, and um, I thought that they gave pretty good value for money. It charges through, again, a micro USB connector, and that may make it tricky if you choose to try and fit one of these inside, say, the cab of an O-gauge locomotive, you still have to retain access to it to get the memory card in and out. Now, it's worth pointing out at this stage, and this applies to both of these cameras, whilst you can watch the footage on your smartphone, and this camera at least gives you the sense that you can record the footage on your smartphone. That footage is super low resolution and it won't let you export it. So to all intents and purposes, the only way that you can get footage off both of these cameras is by having recorded it to the micro SD card, which you then transfer onto your main computer. And that's how you get access to the footage. That seems pretty standard for these kind of cameras. That low range Wi-Fi signal is something that, well, on the footage you can see when we film the smartphone screen and show that footage as we see it, you can see it does tend to drop a few frames here and there. And I guess that's just a limitation of the bandwidth, but it is a really nice feature. Both of these cameras give you the opportunity to view your model layout in a manner that really does bring models alive. And I can well recommend getting hold of one of these cameras to give your layout a whole new lease of life and viewing pleasure. So for scores, I'm not gonna score them in the same way that I've been doing in my regular reviews of model railway rolling stock and locomotives. What I am gonna do is give them a basic score out of 10. Now, the Panasonic camera, I found this very versatile and very reliable. It's not got the best of picture quality, especially when it comes to low light conditions, and there is no internal uh, video smoothing, but it was very easy to use. A kind of clunk click every trip, and because you didn't have to connect it to your smartphone to be able to start and stop recordings, it actually meant this was very versatile for taking out and about. And we've actually even used it to get some footage from our sailing boat. And that's not really an activity that you want to be having to get your smartphone out of your pocket to mess about with. So overall, I would give this, uh, I'd say a good seven out of 10 it does have limitations. Its size means that you have to be quite careful about uh, the wagons that you use. It won't natively fit into things like guards van verandas or cabs of locomotives, and you can't really film sideways to get that passenger in a coach eyed view out of the windows on the side. That said, it's given great sterling service. So can I recommend this one? Yes, I can. And actually the updated version, if it's as good as this, if not better, then certainly that is one to trust. This camera, I love its small size and I also love the cuboid shape because it makes it so much easier to fit into wagons and the like and for it to be a lot steadier. You can even plant it on the line side without it rolling about. And I just felt that that was a really simple yet useful feature. In terms of controls, well, even though it's got the buttons and the lights on the top, I felt that this need to log into it on your smartphone did limit its functionality a bit. And it'd be nice to try and figure out a way of getting it to just record remotely without needing that extra step. Its reactions to low light levels were really good. The picture was really sharp and it was aided by that internal picture smoothing that goes on, which kind of goes a long way to get rid of any of those little jiggles and the, the kind of rumbling sensation that you would get coming up from the track through the wheels and transferred into the camera. Value for money is definitely there. 
and charging it up we found all of that pretty easy taking a micro SD card as well does make it pretty versatile but again it's that low distance Wi-Fi signal that it seems to need to connect with which really does pull this down but I think that that extra image quality and the extra versatility of how to position it on the train kind of um, brings it home and true. And I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. I think it pips the Panasonic, but they are both worthy cameras. I hope that video has been really informative to you. And like me, I've always liked the idea of filming my model railway from an angle that adds to the realism. And what better way than a driver's or a guard's or even a passenger's eyes view of the layout going by. And both of these cameras really have fit the bill for that. And if it's inspired you to go out and get yourself one of these cameras, you're not going to be disappointed. Don't forget that you can check us out on Patreon and help us to uh, make the videos that you want to watch. I'd love to hear from you in your comments down below. What do you think about these cameras? And also, if you know of any other cameras that you have used to great effect on your model railway, do share that in the comments and uh, let other people know about the other great products that are out there. But until next time, don't forget to like this video, share it too, and subscribe to the channel. You'll be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying bye for now. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Michael Churchwood, Anthony Hunt, William Wade, Wayne Johns, Offshore Allen, oorail.co.uk, Tepic, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Peter Bolton, Brian Smith, Brian and Dorothy Mudd, Judge Mortis, and Gary Lewis. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.